Historians believe the notion of ambulance service grew out of the 11th century Crusades when the Knights of St. John transported wounded soldiers to treatment tents. Today's ambulance technicians and paramedics carry on that tradition in state-of-the-art ambulances equipped to provide life-saving care en route to hospital. There are three types of vehicles commonly transformed into ambulances. Minivans, trucks with a closed driver's cab, and trucks with an opening between the driver's cab and the back storage area, like this model. The most important structural addition is a stabilization bar to diminish rocking when the vehicle is racing at high speed. Otherwise, it's mostly a question of retrofitting a regular vehicle to give it the features an ambulance needs. Workers begin by cutting a hole in the roof. This allows them to install a raised aerodynamic roof. The angle of the new roof lessens air resistance, enabling the ambulance to run more efficiently with more control. Inside, meanwhile, they install fiberglass insulation panels with a fireproof metal surface. This insulation keeps the medical area warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Workers affix the raised roof with adhesive caulking. The roof has integrated lights. Protruding lights would ruin the streamline. Workers measure carefully to ensure they center the roof perfectly. Now they spray glue on the back of sheet vinyl. This highly durable antibacterial flooring goes on top of a plywood subfloor they've installed on top of the truck's aluminum floor. Now for the electrical system. They start by replacing the truck's original grill with an ambulance grill that incorporates lights, a siren, and loudspeakers. The truck comes equipped from the automotive plant with certain options designed for conversion to an ambulance. For instance, instead of two regular batteries, the truck takes two new pairs of batteries. One set to power the truck accessories, the other to power the equipment in the back. Now they assemble the front console, an array of buttons and switches that control all the non-medical equipment, such as the emergency lights, the siren, the headlights. There's also a battery life indicator and other system gauges. Once assembled, the console goes into the dash and workers test everything out. The heating and air conditioning systems in the original truck aren't strong enough, so the ambulance factory adds an extra system of each to work in tandem with the existing systems. The frame of the medical cabinet is made of aluminum, a metal that's lightweight and therefore won't weigh down the vehicle. The cabinet shelving is made of either plastic or fiberglass. It's molded to the contour of the vehicle, maximizing storage space. After installing the suction and oxygen systems, electricians run the wires for the cabinet lighting. Once the main electrical panel is in place, they can mount the cabinet and hook up the oxygen equipment, the suction machine and the lighting. A divider between the cab and the back gives the patient privacy. Vinyl-covered foam padding on the ceiling protects ambulance workers' heads when the vehicle jerks. This ambulance model has rotating lights. The red cover, called the lens, is made of virtually unbreakable plastic so that it doesn't crack from the air pressure when the ambulance is speeding. The medical area has a swivel chair positioned where the patient's head will be. Within reach of the chair, the suction machine. The factory thoroughly tests it, along with all other medical equipment. A safety net by the three-seater squad bench protects the crew should the ambulance come to a sudden stop. This mechanism holds the stretcher in place while the ambulance is moving. The stretcher simply locks in keeping the patient safely immobile until the ambulance reaches the hospital.